first let's create a, an empty uh, panda data frame with all the columns that we need so import pandas spd and i'm going to create a data frame completely empty with the columns that i want to gather So it's a list of columns, location, which is uh, the club, basically. I'm going to s specify a date, a time, and let's call it availability for now. I might change this depending on how I want to use this data for query. So I can just view the data frame so you can see how it looks like. You can see an empty table here. Okay. So now let's put some useful information into this data frame. The way I'm building this data frame, I'm going to pass it a list of lists. Each list in this case contains a row. So I have a list of rows and then each row has to have the exact number of columns that I specify here. So each row will have three columns. So each list for each row will have three elements. I'm going to copy and paste the code that we had before. And I'm going to, I'm going to create an empty list called result. Okay. And I'm going to append to this list. So let's create here a uh, a row for our data frame so i'm going to call it data frame row okay in fact i'm going to do this in the last line okay so one of the things that goes in first is the location oh I, f I don't have location actually so i need to get the location right then the date and then i also need to save the availability so I have the availability in the available. Okay, so location, current date, and available. So this is going to be my row. So I have three elements for now. No, actually I forgot one. Time, so four elements. So I have four columns, and I'm going to have four elements. Okay, so let me see how to get this location. Let me see, okay, location should be here right so i can get the location from this div here okay i have an element here i can use it for searching so this div with a data test class equal to booking sports hall okay so i'm going to use this So I'm going to do location equal row dot find div and then I'm going to pass in a class. No, not the class. In this case, it's going to be data test ID. And then the date test ID is going to have this. Now close the brackets. Let me just double check I got it right data test class actually so i'm just going to call it that data test class and i'm going to print location dot text just to make sure i got something that i need there okay seems like i didn't get anything it's empty data test class with a, an a so I made a mistake here, one of the letters. Okay, so I can see the time, the location, and now the number of slots. For some reason, time is not defined in one of the elements. Yeah, it's time of day, not time. I need to also save my current date. 
I'm going to save it here. So current date equal to date picker dot get attributes value. So it's saved now. I'm going to run this again. So I have everything I need. So time, location, number of slots. I'm not printing everything, but you can see the the elements there. The date is already uh, extracted. That's a separate thing. Okay, so now we have a data frame row, which has all the elements that we need. And I'm going to append it to the list that we have, which is result. So result.append df row. Okay. So by the end of parsing all the HTML, I should have a list of lists. So let's just take a look at the result. And we'll see that this is what we get. You can see we have a list of lists. Although I'm, I'm still not happy here because I'm getting a lot more information than what I want. So I need to do location dot text current date dot text time of day dot text and available dot text probably don't need it for current date because that's already text let's yeah so now it's much better right so now we have the location only the the date the time and the number of slots maybe it's out of order let's just double check that so location date time and availability that that's correct so we have everything here as a list of lists list of rows and now it's time to put this into a panda data frame and it's really simple the app equal to pd dot data frame i'm going to pass the result which is a list of rows and I'm going to pass the list of columns. So I'm just going to copy and paste. It's quicker and it's more reliable. And I should get a data frame and I'm going to just display this data frame. This is only for one date, right? What I wanted to do now is to extract for the next five days all the availability for this location. Okay. Later on, we're going to transform this into a method, yeah? So right now, we're just making sure that we figure out all the code that we need to extract the information that we want. And that's why we use a Jupyter Notebook. Very handy. We can see the results straight away. And then at the end, we're going to create this nice, fancy method, which will allow us to retrieve all the information we want with some parameters, and we don't have to repeat any code. Just bear with me. We'll get there eventually. Well, let's figure out how to change this date programmatically, okay? So what field we need to change? Uh, we have already extracted the field. Actually, the input type is here. So we just need to set the value of this field to the date that we want. We can see the date is specified as a string. So let's try to do that. So the date picker is there already. So date picker dot send keys. Send keys is basically the way you just input, uh, you send text to a, a field, whatever field that is. And I'm going to pass in a string, okay? For now, I'm going to just hard code it because we want to make sure it works first, right? So I'm going to send 10th of April and see what happens. Oh, you see, there's a problem here, right? It seems to duplicate rather than replace. So before I even try to type anything, I need to clear this field first by the code, of course, and then I need to send uh, what I need. So date picker dot clear, that should do it. And then I can pass in a string and specify the date I want. So let's try that instead. Okay, we can see 10th of April. Let's try again the eighth. So there's nothing for the eighth. We have already a way of setting the dates. 
and we can extract the data we need based on the date, which is great. Okay, but what's not so great is that we have to hard code this string. We can't just hard code this date. We need to figure out the current date, then convert that date to this string using this format, and then we can pass it in. In, uh, in Python, when we are dealing with dates, we normally use the, the date time library. So I'm going to import it. And also I'm going to import the date object and let's just give you a go. So date.today is going to give me today's date. Okay. But this is in a format, Python format. It's, uh, as you can see, I can't just pass in this string to the date picker. It's not going to understand what that is. But thankfully, there is a very easy way to do this. I can just do date.today. Okay, the same thing I've just done. I can convert my date to a string using strf time. There's some documentation for this method and it will show you like the, the way you can format dates. In my case, I already know what I need to do. So I'm just going to pass in a percentage D, lowercase, percentage B, and then percentage Y. And this should give me the date in a similar format to this. Yeah, let's try that. I misspelled here today. Okay. So you can see it's looking very similar, right? So now based on the today's date, today's date is the seventh. So I can change the date picker here. So date picker dot clear. I'm just going to copy and paste this for now. Yeah. So this is going to be for the seventh. Yeah. So it's going to change to the seventh. And now if I run this again, it goes back to the seventh. Yeah, it went back to the seventh. Okay, at least I can set it to the current date. That's not a problem. And now I need to figure out how I can increment the date. And there's a, a easy way to do this. Date dot day plus date time dot time delta. And then I can specify day is equal to, for example, one. Okay, so this allows me to increment the date from today to, to tomorrow, right? So if I pass in this now to the date picker, I'm going to save it into a variable so it doesn't really start looking too messy. And I'm going to pass in tomorrow to the date picker. And let's see if it works. Oh no, I didn't do this properly. I need to format it. Tomorrow is not defined. I didn't run this for some reason. And now I can, it should work now. This is tomorrow. I had to focus out. That's another thing. Let me try, for example, for after tomorrow, you'll see that it actually changes the date, but nothing happens actually. No, wait, I didn't. Oh, wait, I'm still setting it to tomorrow. So if I do this now, it should set it to after tomorrow. Yeah, but I need to click outside the input field to be able to see the results. There's a way to do this. If I click here and I do tab, it goes to the next field. I'm going to do that with the Selenium to make sure that the date always changes the results. Whenever I change the date, I'm going to just simulate a key press of the tab, which normally does that. Date picker dot send keys. And I'm going to pass in keys dot tab. And I need to import keys from Selenium. In Selenium, there's a, a library that gives me a list of all the keys that you can simulate uh, in the keyboard. So I'm going to copy this here. Okay. 
So let's just try and change the date to today. Okay. And now let's run this code. Okay, there's some error. And yeah, the issue is an extra letter I added. Okay, now it changed the date, yeah, to after tomorrow. So looking good. So now I have a way to change the date to any date I want. Uh, bear in mind, this only allows me to select five days in advance, up to five days or six days. Yeah, today is already gone, so it's going to give me five days in advance. Okay, I have all the code here that I need to use. And then I need to put this into a method and we're going to be able to call this method with a date or a number of days that we want to check in the future, a location that we want to search on, and then it's going to give us a Panda data frame with all the different search results that it finds. It will find that information, of course, by scraping the web page, And that's what we'll be doing next. I'll see you in the next part of this video.